What's good? It's your boy I see Josh back at it again with another video, and we here to talk about June Dokkan Battle. June Dokkan Battle is going to give us probably some good indications of what's really going to be happening on Dokkan Battle after the sync up and stuff like that. So I'm very, very excited to see what's going to be popping off here. So one of the things that you're looking at currently right now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the JP side of the roadmap, and then the global roadmap is right here. Now you can obviously see there has been a little bit of things that's been pushed back and stuff like that. In between this one, one of those things is the arrival of the new SSR who can be recruited in Quest, and then also the team copying function that's also been pushed back, and then the new Quest uh dokkan story chapter is going to be released at this point instead of how it was on the jp side when it was earlier and then like I say you can see the introduction of the new ssr that can be uh joined from the your adventures basically from the quest up is earlier right after golden week uh data download improvements that's the same shop renovation still the same uh, enemy skill expansion still the same and then ally skill expansion still the same it's only been like pretty much like two or three of them that's sort of switched out on a certain things now i'm not gonna really gonna talk about that team function all that much because obviously we'll see that one pretty soon and stuff like that and i don't think that's gonna be like too too crazy uh the shop screen renovation i'm not too worried about that i don't think it's gonna be a situation where it's gonna be like a hey we're gonna like we're gonna adjust up dragon stones to price and stuff like that, make it more fair. I doubt that's gonna be a thing. If it happens, that'd be that'd be great quality of life improvement. Hell, that's gonna be a improvement on the wallet, but I doubt that that would be a thing that would actually happen. But before we go any further, if you're new to the channel, man, if you're new to the channel, you like what you see, subscribe, turn on notifications, fam. Bro, it's, it's 35K uh at the end of that or, or like at the end of the an anniversary is that too much because i would i wouldn't mind being over that i wouldn't mind it but i think that's probably like the next goal really is 35 uh, at the end of the anniversary like i said anniversary is gonna be a big time so i'm obviously assuming there'll be some you know new movement on the channel at that point but 35 would be absolutely insane on this channel again thank you guys so much for subscribing turning on notifications all that good ish now let's get back that new SSR that you can get uh, from the actual adventures, from the quest, from what it looks like that it was talked about here, it says uh, recruit in quest. I'm sort of torn on how that's going to be because I don't know if this is going to be an actual playable unit or if it's going to be a non-playable unit. And I'm on the verge, of, I'm because I'm, like I said, this is all speculation currently right now. We won't know this information until what it looks like, if not um, next week or something like that for June. I, it looks like it's gonna be like next week. It's still in the first week of June, but again, we still have the end of this month, which uh, is, if I'm not mistaken, maybe like Friday or something like that would start uh, in June. So I'm gonna assume it should be, if not mid June or uh, not mid June, but mid next week or something like that is when this is gonna be popping up. We should probably get information a little bit before then as well. But that's what I'm sort of going with here. I'm gonna say this. I think, I personally think, now I could be wrong. We could go back and look at it later on and it could be totally different from what I was thinking of. It happens sometimes, it happens. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys are thinking, if you agree with what I'm about to say or not. I'm thinking this is gonna be a non-playable character. I think this is gonna be a character that you can uh, put on, I won't even say put on the team. I think it's gonna be a new slot that you'll be able to actually put above the team. That'll be a character that's non-playable that you can actually use to buff the team. And that's where I'm going with it. It's going to be a unit that's not even going to be in sort of your, um, not even going to be shown in the actual box to even be able to put on the team. Like this is going to be a separate entities sort of thing, like where it's just going to be a non-playable card, like we already have in the game, stuff like where we have non-playable cards where you can't put them on teams. But like I said, this will be in a spot where you, where you have, say, your support memories to support items and stuff like that. I think we might have like a different box that may pop up and be like, hey, this unit you can throw in. And I think it's starting, hear what I said, starting at SSR is great because that means that they can have improvements to it and upgrade it later on, just like how they do with the actual uh, support memories and stuff like that. You can get them easy aid and stuff like that. Later on, they can do even more functions and stuff. I personally think this is how this is gonna be. I think for a sense, I'm gonna use a couple of characters as like examples and stuff, but say we get like a Dende. Say we get a Dende card that is non-playable. You throw him on at, for the team and it, basically he's a healer. So he, 
could, I'm going to assume how this is actually going to play out because like I said, I don't necessarily know this is all speculation for me. I'm going to assume that it's going to have its own animation to pop in at the beginning, just how like any others do where you have all these other support members, stuff like that will pop off and awaken right at the beginning or they awaken at a specific point. I think this is going to be a card that awakens right at the beginning. So it, it'll have its intro animation play first and then everyone else's intro animation will play after that, which could be very interesting because if this is a card that's treated and acted like it's on the team, but it's not on the team, that's going to be insane because I don't know if it'll have stats. That's the thing. Like if it has stats, then that's going to be crazy. If it doesn't have stats, I'm okay with that regardless, as long as it's still affecting the whole team at the point. Now, the way I'm going to say this is for Dende healer. So say interest animation activates. And as a healer, it's just say it heals you after every turn, maybe like for start out, say it's like 5% of your actual health. When you think about 5% of your actual health right now, you're like, well, that's not too crazy. But then you pair it with all the boo team and you're like, oh, okay, that's all right. <laughs> I can see where we're going. And then also it's starting out as only an SSR that's probably might be awakened to you are or something like that at that point. That's inc that's incredible because then you can go T U R later on and then possibly even LR like well on. So it can start out at 5% and then work itself up to 10% and then maybe like 15%, maybe no more than 20% on that. Maybe no more, but that would be insane if it does. So put that there in a the situation and now also say like, if you want to go into quest and you want to try to link up, you want to try to do all your links up. What if you have a guru? What if a guru has a say 5% chance of getting your links leveled up uh, on all your characters? And then that goes up to, or maybe it starts out at 10% and then it goes up to 20% and then 30% would be, I would say pretty crazy. And you could even go in the same situation of saying like, Hey, you can have this card that comes out that's let me let me put it in a way that's I'm, I'm trying to make it not too broken but <laughs> you know say it's like we have a, a mono of these cards where it only affects one type so you have like an agility type and you can have like a whatever character that comes in and it's only for that agility type it can be like non-play like i said non-playable characters background like gag characters whatever like farmer with a shotgun like it'd be like AGL, like he only supports AGL. So you can run him with extreme or super and say he gives HP attack and defense 10%. And then again, with TUR and LR, that goes from like 10 to 15 to up to 20% or 20 to 30%. So when you think about HP attack and defense for AGL, no key, just HP attack and D, uh, defense for AGL. And that goes for any other types that they have for those that starts to get interesting because we only have 150 currently right now. We don't even have a 170 of the mono leads. So that would only be 330% at that point, or just now would only be 310% or 320% depending on what they do and how they awaken, how long it takes for them to awaken and stuff like that. That could be a massive, massive game changer. And I don't mean like that is just like, Oh, he, he, ha, ha, you know, massive. like, no, that could be crazy. Like that could absolutely be insane, especially for a mono full team. We see how mono is sort of stacking up right now. And it's only going to get better and better as it goes, especially with the super easy ace for the mono gods. <laughs> like it's, it's going to be insane. I, I, let's just put it at that. So what if you even have a certain situation where do they go by category? And then also where it could be like a, one of these characters that only gives off key. So say you have a whole team that struggles with key. There you go. Like you have a key option. So now everyone's going to start out with nine key or 10 key, depending on how it is. Like you can get your six and then maybe this is a three key or two key or four key, or one key, whatever it starts out with, like could be pretty massive. And also with, I'm going to assume you can go, you can play around with this a lot because you can have like damage reduction in there, or you can be like every character on the team gets like uh, whatever chance to get an additional attack, which would be 
fucking broken. I'm, as a matter of fact, I retract that statement. That would be that would be crazy broken. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna retract that statement right then and there. But, but like, if you go for like anything of like Dodge or something like that, so maybe you have like a maybe you have like a Weiss or something like that that has like a chance or Ultra Instinct Goku that's non-playable, whatever. That has a whole team chance to dodge, like a percentage. Crazy, crazy, or just attack and defense like on each turn. Crazy, like the whole team gets this much attack and defense. I don't know. In my opinion, that's just how I'm sort of taking that right now. And I think I've touched on this before, but I didn't touch on it too long in a previous video. But I wanted to make a dedicated video talking about that because seriously, this whole function right here could be incredible. And like I said, for it's coming out on JP first global, we can really see how this is going to be. Because like I said, if this is a situation where it does buff like a character from the anniversary, which we don't know yet. If it does, holy crap. And then also with the Tanabata, holy crap. So we'll see how this goes next week. We should get probably get some information for this one. I would probably assume at the beginning of next week or so. Because like I said, Global is going to get maintenance. I'm going to assume that JP will probably get something, some kind of maintenance, whatever thing for this to be implemented in. I would assume the same way. This is going to be something that's probably going to be a game changer to actually really get to see exactly how this is going to go. Because like I said, this is just the roadmap right now. This is just the first half, really, of the roadmap. We ain't even got the second half. We don't know how this is going to go after that. We don't know any other sort of big time changes that are going to be happening. And I want to say this right at the end. That card. That card could be very useful depending on if we get a new event that actually replaces chain battle and it is some kind of a longer raid sort of event that could be insane I, all i'm saying is that could be insane but let me know in the comment section below how you guys feel about this one if you did enjoy this video hit that like button subscribe and turn on notifications other than that have an awesome day slash night stay safe and i'm out peace yeah!